Hello! Let's see. I hope everybody can hear us just fine. Welcome to the Leader Games monthly design stream. I'm Patrick Leader. It's true. And my <laughs> name's Cole, and we're both showcasing the new shirts that are now for pre-order. They're wonderful. I, I heard there's some like internal division about if this blue is too electric, but I like Ooh. straight love it. I think it's amazing, and I hope it, it doesn't change. I haven't. I didn't really think about it. I like it. Yeah, I see, I just, a lot of t-shirt designs are kind of like dollar. They want to bring it down and amp it up. But you got to do it. So I used. To, I actually used to have a room in my old house that was that color. <laughs> okay. Maybe a little bit paler, but it was called electric blue, and it was. Uh, it was. It made That's feel, hilarious. It made it feel good. Uh, uh, so electric blue. It's the color of my room. It's the color of my room. I never used the room because it just turned into a junk room because it didn't have heat, but here we are. This is a great, this is great uh, on stream. So we also have uh, Fort Behind Us. Yeah, let's, let's do a little studio news and we can talk about what we've been playing. Yeah. And then we can talk about game design because we've got a lot to talk about for game design. Yeah. I feel like. We have a lot to talk about game design. Studio news, would you just describe it as quiet right now? It's not really. It's like the opposite of quiet. It seems quiet only from the outside. Well, I mean, they're just playing a game out there casually, but uh, the um, they, those ops people. Uh, no, yeah, so, like, the mandate of the studio, it, it, we're kind of delivering on what the studio does right now, and that is, I mean, at its base level, we design games. Mm -hmm. um, but we act, I mean, we really have three games in active design right now. Yeah. Uh, we and, and not we, development, design. Yeah, yeah, well, we, yeah, we've never had three happening at the same time quite yeah. like this. Yeah, yeah, this is, it's been, it's, it, it is the fruition of the model I laid out for mm -hmm. years ago, and, and now it's, now we're here, and it, it's like, it's hard. <laughs> it, it turns out, it's really hard. Like, it was hard to work on one project at a time, but three is, is a lot for everybody. Um, oh, also, we are streaming from my office today. Yeah. Um, so we're a little cramped. Yeah, that's the other studio news. Yeah, the other studio news. Yeah. My office is now a stream room mm -hmm. uh, because we are running out of space. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> in uh, the best way. Yeah, in the best way. So we are now up to uh, 14 employees. Uh, and then if you include interns, we're up to 16 employees. Mm -hmm. And if you include myself, because it's like. Right, right, right. I, it's weird how we get paid. Uh, and um, yeah, so we're up to 14 folks, and that means our 3,000 square foot office is. We, we're just we're in the corners. We've we've moved. Yeah, and so now we are talking about moving again, and um, it's hard because with the shipping crisis, we have a lot of our money on boats. On boats right now. We're waiting to get on boats. Yeah, or in warehouses, and um, and so it's like I can't go to the bank and be like, well, we or make this someday. Um, I gotta, mm -hmm. gotta go to the bank with, with money. And, so, and, we, and we have money, but uh, I want to spend all the money making more games. So. Right. Um, yeah, it's all right. And we're not like, it isn't it isn't too cramped, but we're just starting to get there. It's like, yeah. when we have, you know, for a long time, we could all have lunch at the same table. Now we mm -hmm. kind of do like one and a half, two table lunches. Yeah. Uh, this is stuff that no one cares about. I mean, <laughs> right? But it's exciting. We're up to 14. Yeah, we're up to 14. Yeah. So like yeah. the office is like bustling. Uh which is, it's just a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to, to walk in and be like, oh, a lot of people are doing different games, or I will, I will, you know, speaking of having lots of games in development, I'll go try to fish for playtesters and discover that Nick has taken all of them, uh, and so I won't be able to play, <laughs> play test in the afternoon. But these are great, absolutely great problems, problems to have. Um, yeah, so like, well, I don't know, there's a bunch of different things that we're, we're trying to figure out right now, like if we can exist in the same office, but grow within the building, we might look at other buildings. Who knows, uh, but I, th I think, you know, for the next at least a year, we'll probably stay put just because we. Well, we're on the lease. Yeah, we're on the lease. <laughs> we're on the lease, and we're good. And we're good tenants. Thank you to the company that hosts us. Yes. So yeah, uh, that's studio. That's studio. Well, and wait, oh, oh, so should we have shirts? Uh, we have uh, shirts. You can pre-order them now. They're fabulous. Mm -hmm. We have uh, an oath shirt, a fort shirt. A root shirt, the classic root shirt. Is mm -hmm. there another one I'm forgetting? No, it's just those are the ones. Just those three. Yeah, yeah but people um, immediately like you need the, a paladin shirt. The fort shirt is awesome because I think it features all the staff members. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Or almost all the staff members? Uh, uh, maybe a staff plus a few. I don't know. Uh, no, and the oath shirt is my favorite shirt that Kyle's ever made. So, you know, l let him know the next time you see him. It has a pig on it. It has a pig, and it just—it's just great. It's just a, it's a great little 
Great little joke. Um, and then also for I don't know. Am I supposed to say this? Oh, I know. I've already. I've already. I know exactly what, what we're going yeah, to say. Yeah. It's almost here. It's almost yeah. here. So North American restock for the core set for Ford, and then the expansion for and the expansion uh, for is all. Oh, sorry. I'm holding it behind the little Ford sign. Yep. There it is. Hello. Um, yes. Th this is almost here. So if you want to get your pre-orders in now is the time. Right. And it's it's great. You'll love it. And you can see, you get a little glimpse of my very weird game collection here. I'm spotlighting, because now we have a shelf behind us, Divinair, an extremely underrated and wonderful competitive deduction game. Mm. Great game. Totally underrated. Do we publish that, or? Can we? No, do we? Uh, Asmodee. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, Asmodee. They, <laughs> they, got, they got it first. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we've been playing lately, Cole. Uh, what have we been playing lately? I have been playing, um, in the world of video games, I have been playing um, Mega Man, as always. I kind of, uh, my kids go through phases, and now they're getting back into Mega Man. And so we, we beat X3 together last weekend. It was great. And the, X3 is the such a hard boss. Such a, it's just a long end. Um, and then, in board game world, I've been playing a ton of Zia, the... Le Legends, Legends of the Drift, of system. drift system, yeah, maybe something. Drift something about someone drift smarter than us looked that up. Um, it's and I love and I love it and I love it. That I love this goofy game so much. I had never. I think I just wasn't into open world games when it came out, but now because I'm working on kind of an open world game, it's mm. not really an open world game, but it like brushes against some ideas from it. And Nick is so Nick and I both realized that we were both working on games where. At various points in those games, players control a single ship mm -hmm. and have to navigate a big world as a single ship. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, well, we should learn and play Zia, and we should learn and play Merchants and Marauders. Mm -hmm. And Merchants and Marauders is great, fun game, but I have really loved Zia because it just is so wild of a design. It reminds me of Duel of Ages and how much it just doesn't care. I, I, it just doesn't care. You go into the debris field, and there's like a, you know, there's a sixth chance that you're dead. You just blow up. That you blow up. The and rest of the turn is gone. And, and, and it also, like, it, it does a good job managing the sharp consequences for things. Like, oh, you did something risky and now your ship blew up. And that that's going to, like, feel, uh, it's going to leave an impression narratively, but it doesn't derail your game. Like, you, you, your ship responds. No big deal. Sure. Um, yeah. And I, I just, I, yeah, so we actually, we, we set it up and played it, and on the very first turn, Nick flew into a nebula. And it completely zapped all of the batteries on the ship. He ran out of energy. Uh -huh. And he looked at me and he was like, oh, wait, so I like lose all my energy? I'm like, yeah, you lose every bit of your energy. He said, oh, I think I love this game. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, just, like the fact that it would take something from me. And then uh, the other game, I'm going to do one more. Um, we, uh, oh, yeah, so uh, sorry, two more things on Zia. One, the expansion's great. And two, uh, Cody Miller's follow up game happened to launch today. So, Cody Miller. Get a little leader bump. You get a little leader bump. Um, and then the other game is uh, because the game I'm working on has a lot of trick taking elements. Uh, Nick taught uh, a bunch of people at the studio how to play Sheep's Head, which I am convinced is an Italian game, and I have to go find the title. Yeah, I mean maybe, um, yeah. but it is a it is a great trick taker. I loved it, and I I think it was a little divided. I mean, it's not the whole staff was taken with it. But I, I told Nick after we were done playing a set of games that like I just I only want to be playing Sheep's Head. Like I think I'm gonna probably order like a custom Sheep's Head deck to take back with me when I visit my family next week mm -hmm. because I just want to play more Sheep's Head. Great, great trick taker. What about you, Patrick? What are you playing? Oh, you were gonna ask me that, weren't you? <laughs> the, ah! the problem with this question <laughs> is you ask somebody and you think, haha, I've got another I, question, I, and then it swings back and then it at you. Swings back at you. So I still been playing um, Into the Heart of the Wild. Uh, which I just got stuck on and stopped playing. And then I got back to it recently. Um, I sunk a little time into Cookie Clicker. Okay. I just... It makes... That game makes me mad that it is so good. Okay. Please is, give me your defense of Cookie Clicker. It's just nonsense! Because you always... You feel good. You feel you feel good that you're, you're moving forward all the time. Mm -hmm. And it, it just... It's... That is the, the video game experience. So I... Um, that. Uh, my wife and I finished um, It Takes Two last night, um, which I have three complaints about, and but the rest of it is 
is very good. It's very fun. So more good things than complaints. Yeah. Uh, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. There's three. So the uh, for those who don't know the premise, it is this game about these. Uh, it's an action adventure, kind of a puzzler, but it hits a lot of genres mm-hmm. effortlessly. And that's that's what I really like about it. Is it shifts shot like one moment you're playing a driving game, the next moment you're playing a jumping game, the next moment you're like there's literally mm-hmm. a dungeon crawling section. Ah, that's great. And it's two player, it's co-op, it, death has almost no consequence. So my my quibbles with it is there's one tonal moment in it where like you're like have to do something horrible and you're like, this doesn't feel doesn't fit the rest of the game very as mm-hmm. well. Um, and then um, my other big problem with it is that the bosses seem to be in the early part of the game, and you don't really think about the later bosses. Maybe because they get so easy by then, mm-hmm. or, or something. like they don't—they don't get harder enough. Right, right. Um, and so that's that—that uh, that is my uh, quibble with it. Um, and maybe there was another one. Maybe there was another one. I can't remember. Anyway, uh, but it's a great game. I really, I really enjoyed it. Um, oh, just my usual, my usual quibble with all mm-hmm. games or movies about marriage and divorce is that. People really don't fall in love like that. They don't sure, fall out sure, of love sure, sure. like that. Like it's it's a it's, it's, yeah. it's not one argument that, that drives a couple apart. It could be like if there was a, if there was a moment of violation of trust, but but it generally is a, a longer process than that. So it's like any any romantic com- I, and I actually I like rom coms. Yeah, but of the course. ones that like hinge on a misunderstanding. Yeah, where if they were to just like slow down for a second and t- talk to each other, it would yeah. be immediately resolved. Um, that, that's usually like, and then I have to stop watching these movies it makes me so, I'm so frustrated and so the divorce in It Takes Two is is, is based on an actual it's it's months of bad communication of, of falling out of love and so it, it isn't going to be this one moment that saves it even if it's an exciting ephemeral moment that, that's in the game but but it's a beautiful game otherwise and, and the visuals are amazing so if someone's looking for a good game about relationships you should play Telling Lies uh, which was the follow up to her story mm fabulous uh, Sam Barlow mm-hmm. I think that, that, that is the person's name just really well acted mm-hmm. and well directed game. but I, again I like the just the genre shifting in that so for board games I have been painting and playing uh, this game for current games workshop this little game called War Cry yeah um, <laughs> not a lot of people have heard it's a kind of indie darling War Cry uh, and I've spent a lot of money and time on it I'm learning how to paint again uh, which has been uh, a lot of fun uh, and I have a ton of money sunk into scenery, so I can, my friends can come over and play with me. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's, it's happened five times. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's actually pretty <laughs> wonderful, right? You're like, this is you know, that's five times in a single game. Mm-hmm. It's pretty for a non-studio game. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, I was thinking it's so funny. Like when when we're on games in the studio, they're going to get played a hundred, yeah, times. You, I think it's somewhere between. Most games I've like worked on when I try to do the numbers, it's like between a hundred and two hundred plays. Right. And it's it's hard to like get an exact read on it. It's also hard to know if that number means anything. But then a lot of games outside of the studio, if I get to like the ten play mark, I'm mm-hmm. like, wow, we really played that. We really, yeah, we really played the hell out of that game. Um, We're now down to five dollars a play. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. And I also I also played Oath uh, last weekend because we had a break in our role playing schedule. And um, the reason I think that's noteworthy to me is uh, it's the first time I really casually played Oath. Yeah, that's yeah, outside of the studio, just with my friends. No, 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 like just, just no stakes, for, like in a design sense. And uh, um, I just, I loved it. I thought it was, I thought it was a lot of fun. So I, I really, I really had a lot of fun playing it. So I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah, I'm I decided to play it soon. I forgot that the people's favor gives you dice, and that would have changed the game for me if I had picked it up. Well, only it depends if it's the oath condition. That's the thing, but it will it will give you the ability to discard cards and sites, which is the which is which is that's, a, that's its power, its its true power. We were just taking big swings at each other every turn, so and it was it was fine. I just ran out of heat. At, at, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. You, you spell your energy. My 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 youngest brother um, has been playing a lot of oath and has been giving me oath updates on his phone, and they're wonderful. He is and he's at a place in his life where it's very easy for him to like get together with some friends and play a game like two or three times in a row, mm-hmm. which is kind of. Like how Oath was designed conceptually, it was like, ah, oh, man, what what if you played a game where at the end of the game, you just wanted to keep going, and that was like a very early part of the pitch. Now in practice, especially if it's your first game of Oath, you're gonna the game's gonna take three hours if it's your first game, or or, or even a little more, uh, and so this is like I it's been a long time since I've played two games of Oath in a row. Sure. Um, so I, I think it's kind of a silly part of its conceit, but it's so fun. 
occasionally running into people, and in this case, like talking to my brother, he's like, oh yeah, I, we sat down and we played three games of Oath in a row, and I was like, ah, to be 23. Oh. And just to be able to like really, really sit in a game. Now, this young person keeps walking into the room and asking me to do things. And yeah. I'm like, no. Uh, so uh, we spent 15 minutes on a five minute topic, so good to job us. Okay, I mean, yeah. we're, we're doing our part. We have to talk. Uh, so we've got a lot of questions piling from Facebook and on screen, but let's just do the overview of uh, what we're working on. So yeah. What are you working on? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm working on a game that does not have a name yet, which we'll call Space Game. It takes place in space. Zero. Yeah, so we can talk about it. Should, should, should we trial balloon some names? Yeah, let's do that. That, okay. that sounds fun. Okay. Okay. So the trouble is we got this four-letter thing going, and we kind of want to keep it going. Mm -hmm. But it's so hard. There just aren't that many uh, words. I, I go to this website. I can't remember what it's called. It's called, like, Word Finder or something, maybe. Uh -huh. And you just type in, like, all the words in the dictionary that are... Think four letters. Yeah. And so you look at them, and they're in an array. They're like maybe ten, it's like ten columns. Uh -huh. And it doesn't take that, maybe a half an hour to scroll through all of them. Right. And you're like, there just aren't that many. Right. I just feel, I feel boxed in. So this is a game that is, so I'll give the quick, maybe let's do quick overviews of all the projects. Sure, yeah. And yeah. Then, then, then we can talk about names. We can talk about names, we can talk about names. So the overview of the space game is, this is um, a different riff on Oath, basically. So Oath moved in a way where Oath is very um, gradualistic and very like it has this very slow roll of history to it. And that lends itself really well to some kinds of stories, but not other kinds. Mm -hmm. And the space game is an episode to tell stories that are less decline and fall of the Roman Empire and more Star Wars. More like, you know, this is a four episode sequence. It's got a climax. It's going to have a dramatic ending. Um, the famous like Star Wars quadrology. Yeah, 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 everybody knows that Star Wars has four movies in it, by which I mean four, five, eight, and Rogue One. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, ooh, no. ooh. <laughs> um, but it, it, it's just meant like, so whereas Oath, you can drop in and out players, that's fine. Uh -huh. uh, Oath has no endpoint. This game is really a three or four player game only. Uh, there won't be a one or two player mode or anything like that. And you need to play the same sequence with the same group. And so um, I've been starting to think about it like a campaign game, but smaller. So, you know, uh, Gloomhaven might take you like 40 hours to get through. Sleeping Gods is like a 20-hour game. This is like a six-hour game divided into like 70-minute sections. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's the space game. It's a, a little bit lighter than Root in its complexity. Um, a lot of nonsense in the box, and it has some kind of weird uh, trick-taking vibes to it. As you can tell, I'm, having, I'm not really used to pitching it. It's still just a little brain, maybe. Mm-hmm. That's going to be hard to teach. Super easy teach. <laughs> okay. It's the easiest teach of any game we have. It's easier than four. The the trick taking, the trick taking is throwing me for a loop. Yeah, it's gotten a little. It's gotten a little easier okay. since last you played. All right, good. Uh, Scummy ban SP Shaman right now. That's uh, for that Jar Jar Binks comment. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go ahead and type slash ban. Uh, so. We have someone operating the board. It's not familiar, so you're saved this time, SB. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I guess people are asking about names. We'll say names very quickly. So Void, under contention for a name. Well, Void's taken. Void is taken by, by an abstract. We could give it a subtitle and kind of skate around yeah, it, but it always yeah. feels a little weird. Uh, I like Void because there's actually a term in trick-taking that when you're out of cards of the suit that is active, you you're void voiding them. You, you voided that suit. So like Void, Void I think is kind of cute. Um, I really like the name Arcs because the game plays and like you know an arc could be like three or four games and you have all these different arcs in it. Mm -hmm. um, Patrick, lay down your, your your the title you really like. Well, I so I because the it's after the like it's after the the fall of right. the empire and so I wanted to call it Year Zero. Sure. As, which is also two words, um, sure. two four letter words, and then uh, so which shortened to zero, and then to make it cooler, so it's in space, you change the Z to an X and call it zero, zero, uh, which I think is a pinball machine from the seventies, but I, mean, I, I think I, think I imagine terrible. that IP is not protected. <laughs> I, think, I think we're I think we're good on that. I, one. Zero might be something else too. 
Uh, and then I also I liked Warp, which I think we both. I, I like Warp a lot too. Unfortunately, there is a game called Warp that's coming out. So oh, oh, so well, interesting. We lose, so we lose Warp. Yeah, we don't know. We're we're, we're still we're still puzzling through it. The names are funny because I feel like they just take a long time. Oh, uh-huh. like there'll always be at least like when it came to Oath, there was a time I was like, all right, Kyle, we know enough to start working on the name, and we just would send each other lists of bad names, and then eventually, and eventually one hit. Yeah, and eventually one hit. Um, I feel like um, that was so. As some of you may know, uh, Fast was originally named Trove, and we ran into somebody decided to protect the name Trove, and um, so we changed it to Vast. And as soon as David had said Vast, it was that was it. it was, yeah, that was just, the name. Yeah, just, like, you kind of know. It just I, I, it hits right, and I didn't feel bad anymore. So yeah. it, was, it was good. Yeah. Um, cool. So then that's one project. Uh, that we're working on, and then we're also working on this little pirate game, mm-hmm. uh, tentatively titled Ahoy. Ahoy has been an interesting name because I think everybody likes it enough that it could just be Ahoy. Ahoy is great. I think Ahoy is yeah, great, yeah. but like I don't know, I don't want to be. But yeah, uh, Ahoy is really cool because we're, in some respects, it's a very small game. Like it might fit actually in the fort size box, I and mean, we might build it in that product category, but. It uh, it feels like small merchants and marauders a little bit. It, feels, uh-huh. it has like this like it's a big epic strategy game with a lot of fun stuff going on, but it also is like pretty easy to teach. It's a, a dice placement um, game with uh, some really cool like special powers and roles to mm-hmm. play. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love playtesting it. It's like I get you know whenever I'm feeling like a little exhausted with a problem I'm working on, I'll go see if Nick wants to play Ahoy. Can we send a hook? With the game as kind of the the, the, the deluxe pre- feely is the is a hook you can you just hold oh, away. Yes. And uh, and Kyle has done some awesome art that we're not allowed to show. But. Yeah, it is. Pretty, in fact, it's not even not really piratey. It, it's not. It's, it's like not, a little pirate. It's yeah. not Pirates of the Car- Caribbean though. No, no it is not. not it is not Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. It is, it is d- distinctly Kyle. Calls. Uh, there you go. Oath Basaga. Uh, yeah. Mildly pirated. So, and it's not Merchants and Marauders in, in that sense. So, yeah, so uh, I, um, as, you know, I've been following me on social media. Um, boy, I've been, I've been all over the place. I've been struggling a bit. Yeah, you, I think you've... Um, you've I've been, been struggling a bit artistically. Um, you are... No, I think you're, you've been in a very productive place. In some respects, like the most productive place I've seen you in. Yes. Um, but it also means that there are lots of hard choices that have to be made. There are... That's yeah. So and then I feel bad. So, but anyway, uh, so I started out in December. I mean, we were working on Marauders this winter, so like in the spring. So don't like having you know. I've been busy, but then I um, started working on a game with Kyle. Kyle just kind of pitched a form factor for a game called Havoc, uh, which was going to be a dueling game, um, and we got pretty far into. It. I got to the point where like it's not publishable for sure, but there's like. The bones of it were there that we could that we could evaluate if yeah. we wanted to publish it or not. Uh, and I like where I ended up. The combat was just feeling a bit more fiddly than what I think people, the audience would have wanted. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, and 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 I, the you know the challenge. Um, uh, <laughs> the challenge. SP is cracking me up today. Uh, as usual. Um, I, so the challenge with like that is, you know, you're gonna you're gonna get lined up against other two player dueling games or other three player dueling games, and um, some of them are very breezy and lovely, and I think they do that. What, they're hitting what they hit very well. Uh, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with Havoc. Maybe I was just no, it, I was yeah. just having a bad time. Well, but, but, but it like took it like took an interesting direction because like a lot of brawlers, yeah, have like just kind of some. There's I think there can be kind of like dice checking or chucking or I think like war. I mean, obviously war is a, not really brawler but it is yeah. kind of and you're just like there's not a lot of choices but it's very light and yeah. it, like there's going to be a lot like when, when kids if you've ever seen two kids play war yeah. they shout at each other they yeah. have, like you know they, they get really into it and havoc was going in this other direction which which was very technical yeah it was like if you were designing like a fencing game or something yeah yeah you know what i mean yep. and i think it wasn't like when, when we saw Kyle's original proposal, mm-hmm. when I would go back and like look at what Kyle was picturing, yeah. he really wanted something a little bit like breezier and goofy. Yeah. And then, but Havoc was actually like getting very strategic, and and it wasn't it wasn't like hitting. It didn't feel like. It was I, yeah, and maybe maybe in a year we go. Okay, let's have a junior developer take this and just take out those parts, put in just dice combat, 
Sure. Publish. Go. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And I think, the, but it was, uh, it, yeah, I think it was an interesting design, but also like one of the most important parts of this project, something that I feel like Patrick has to remind me of and I have to remind him of all the time, mm -hmm. is that whatever project you pick, you have to live with it for like six to eight months. Mm -hmm. And so you really don't want to end up doing something that like doesn't feel like a good use of your time or doesn't feel like, you know, what you really want to get into. Travis Hill's in the audience. Hello, Travis. Oh, hey, Travis. Yeah, I haven't seen him. Uh, so I moved on to that, and then there was this. There was another dueling game, and kind of a kind of an area control game that I had told. I had been working on it before we met, and then I told you about it like a couple years ago. And mm -hmm. I was like, and you were like, just go make that, go prototype that. Yeah. I was like, okay. Two years later, I'll finally prototype that. It's sure. to deal with, and uh, and 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 so what it did. It was called Oubliette, and what it did for me is it brought to. It brought. It was kind of a dueling game that brought to my attention three other, um, some other mechanics to, to play through and to talk. And, and it gave me room to talk about havoc. I think mm -hmm. a little bit better. It only frames some of the problems I think. Uh, I liked it a bit better. Out of the yeah, uh, it was it was a pretty good effort. Um, and then that started to inform. Um, there's just some thematic issues with it, so that started to inform. Uh, another project that it had kind of evolved from called Dungeon Fortress, which is what I was working on before uh, Vast, and I had sat down to, to when Vast came into my life. And I, like, I saw some of the issues that I was able to solve now because I'm a more skilled designer. Mm -hmm. In Mubliette, I saw solutions in those. I saw solutions for Dungeon Fortress, so I said, let's get working on Dungeon Let's get back to Dungeon Fortress. Uh, and so we're still... Still figuring it out a little bit. We're still bit. figuring it out. It's going for... Well, we're like ten days into this experiment. I'm feeling pretty happy with where it's at. Um, it like it, it like you can play it to completion. It exists. It works. It's it's interesting. Yeah. It like I think. Um, I mean, even the, the very first time that I sat down and played it, I was surprised at how quickly I was finding myself like making choices and dealing with the consequences of previous choices. Right. Whereas I think, um, and I think part of that is the genre. Sure. That it works in. Whereas, like, a fighters are, they're tactical, right? Uh -huh. Where this is a lot more like, oh, no, like, you didn't build that farm last turn. Right. Now you have to worry about this problem feeding your troops. And, okay. like, it just feels a lot more, like, tightly yeah. um, strategic or something. Um, <laughs> I like the farms are just kind of put in to, like, get it going. <laughs> no, no, like, it works. <laughs> I, I, well. I, yeah, no, Patrick, Patrick was rude me because the thing I really, I told him the part of the design I liked the most. And he was like, well, that was, like, not a not a mistake, but it was like just a weird stopgap or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To kind of like get it moving. But it was so good. That so, was so it was, good. It was, really I mean, well. it was an inspired moment. So what what Dungeon Fortress is then is it is a um, it it could either branch to at this point. What what was your you said one thing and then he said or it could be. So it can be like Dungeon Fortress could be two things right now. It could be a really like robust fantasy 4x mm -hmm. that is one thing that it could be mm -hmm. uh, kind of in the model of the old game Rune Wars before they turned Rune Wars into a miniatures game mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that it could be is like a low player count 4x game you just said 4x twice yeah I know okay. but 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 um, but, but I think th there are kind of two different ways a 4x can look right? yeah like it, th th one way is you make it like other 4x, which is totally fine, right? right? And it, like it, it is, I, I keep using the, I keep referencing Eclipse because there are some mechanical things that aren't similar, but they just remind me of it. Yeah. Um, but I think you could build a really cool fantasy 4x game. I think I think that's still fair to say Eclipse because in a way the design was my response to playing Eclipse. Sure. Yeah, sure. Go, go and then and then the other way to do it is like a very interactive, like two to three player. 4x game yeah. that is actually tuned to that number. So not you know like when if, for anyone who's ever played like TI with three players, you can do it, and it even kind of works, but it also like feels shrunken. Right. It's like obvious that I, that wasn't the right way to do it. And one of the problems with 4x games is oftentimes they only work with like five or six players, and when mm -hmm. you play them with fewer players, it just doesn't feel right. Sure. But I think that like the paths pr that that are presenting itself for Dungeon Fortress are. Like actually, they can be expressed with player count. It could be a really high player count, more of a traditional Fenrir sure. game, or it could be a low player count, like very like entangled, interesting, um, like maybe a smaller world but a denser world. Mm -hmm. um, and I always like want to think about Magic Realm when I think about small, dense worlds. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot of storytelling packed into just a few hexes. Yeah, yeah, I yes. 
and the and the way that the board responds to you and things that are going on in play. So yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. So the the premise is that you are playing kind of a, a a fantasy villain and you are fighting for control of this um, dungeon. You can go out and raid the surface for money, which is one of the axes of victory. And um, you can raid each other. You can raid. There's settlements on the board. You can raid, and uh, you're fighting for control of the map and just trying to be like. Mm-hmm. Kill the most, uh, and and uh, those are all playing well together right now, and it, I, I'm really enjoying it. It um, it reminds so this description might make you think about um, the Vlada game Dungeon Lords, mm-hmm. and Dungeon Lords to me is a direct, like Dungeon Lords is Vlada saying, "I love Dungeon Keeper. What if Dungeon Keeper were a board game?" Mm. And what I think I really like about uh, about um, well, the game you're working on, Patrick, is that. It doesn't start from Dungeon Keeper. Mm-hmm. It's like no, like what if there's there's this dungeon layer, and you're like you're approaching the, the the subject of the game not with a video game in mind, but like with the setting in mind. Mm-hmm. So then all the, these things kind of bubble up, which is like of course they're going to be like good guys coming to raid you, mm-hmm. but also you could get all your little band of baddies together and go trash your neighbor's dungeon. Mm-hmm. And that's because that's how such, such a world would be. Rather in Dungeon Lords, everyone is like carefully insulated. Yeah, yeah. And like playing their board. And you're sending. Well, oh yeah, yeah. And I'm sorry, I was thinking of the video game. We're, yeah, 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 yeah. So you can play the video game four player, and we used to do that. Wait, really? Yeah, you'd have is you'd have hearts in different corners of the dungeon, and then you'd have to tunnel to each other and destroy each other's heart. Okay. Um, I, I, I I did not know that. I not not funny. fun at all. <laughs> I'm trying to fix that problem. <laughs> that's why. That's why you didn't like it. Um, and yeah, call the game right. Right. That's actually not a bad name. Um, so and um, yeah, and so I don't know. So we're we're pulling that in. Um, my pen is dying again. Okay, raid. I wrote it down, and that's you're talking about the hard drive system, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. random something. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, let's open it up to questions. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Give us your questions. Uh uh-uh. Empty. <laughs> well, there's a bunch from Facebook. Oh yeah. Well, we can. Well, so how's the space game coming along? Interested to hear more about the mechanics and gameplay. So I can I can talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um. The space game is in a really cool spot right now where the core engine is so close to being done. Uh-huh. Like, we can sit down and we can just play it. And when, when I when I look at the changes in the design over the last month, they just haven't been that big. And a lot of it is figuring out, like, what is exactly the right map logic and kind of inventing scenarios that I know I want the game to run into and then tweaking the core structure to make sure they work. And the page that I'm getting ready to turn is actually to start generating content. So, like, this is a game that is designed to be played in, you know, these kind of, like, small arcs or campaigns that are two to five sessions, maybe, mm-hmm. two to four. And I, the individual session is very, very good. And what I'm trying to do right now is make those four, four session games work. Um, so the, the core action structure is... Uh, kind of a trick-taking game. So, like, uh, players have cards with different actions on them. They lead them, and you have to follow suit, or you can play off-suit. And the the player who plays the highest on-suit card gets to lead the next one. So the the game is actually like an action auction uh, in in a way that's uh, it's been really fun to explore. It's 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 the most mechanically... um, I don't know, like... Founded, or uh, I don't know the right the right word for it, but b- basically, when I think about all the games I've worked on, it's the most game of your games. It's the most game of my games. Yes, uh, yes, it's the most <laughs> game of my games. Well, I, it reminds me of something like Infamous Traffic, where very o- early on in Traffic, I had like the action division and the conspiracy pools, mm-hmm. and then that mechanism carried through the entire game. This one's been a lot like that, where there is a central action mechanism that is just kind of sitting sitting at the heart of the game. Um, there are some, and I'm kind of borrowing freely from myself, so like the map system is like simplified Oath a little bit. Uh, the combat system is a riff on Oath's combat, but is much, 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 much simpler. Um, so I'm trying to get this to like, uh, one of my goals for the game, and I think I might have said this before, is when players get it for the first time, we won't need a walkthrough. Uh, there will be a uh, four page quick start guide, just a single sheet of paper folded, mm-hmm. and that will have everything you need to know to start playing right away. 
and then there'll be a longer reference book with all the all the various bobbles in it. Um, so I'm doing all that, and then on the the other part of the design is one of the really important parts of the game that I really want to be present is uh, have us having a single ship mode, so that if your player position is getting beat to hell, you can escape and then play as a vagabond for a game or two, and still participate in the game, try to win on new conditions, things like that. But handling the transition from a small nation to a single generation ship, and then landing and doing the reverse of that, uh, and then figuring out what the precise mechanisms of that single ship are, that's kind of where all my design efforts are at the moment. Did you say Yeet was a potential title? Yeet. As, as in, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're getting out of here! Yeet! Yeet. Yeet. <laughs> it's a single ship just piecing out on, on the cover. Uh, all right. Um... What I, what I meant by so we you know I I never really talked about game as narrative or simulation with you. Mm -hmm. I that's weird that we've never talked yeah, about it. That's more of a role playing concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel like I feel like of your games the uh, the trick taking is not simulating anything. Mm -hmm. And it, it's creating it's a game mechanic that's creating a yep. simulated result. There, there was it exists for a very specific reason, which is. I wanted the game to have uh, players doing very different things at different times. Where, like, you know, at one point you might be like digging up some bones on an alien planet, and someone else is like trying to put down an uprising. And so, because I want a really big narrative scope, there has to be some place where we're interacting and meaningfully trading blows. Right. And so, I needed a somewhat artificial action structure that kind of brings everybody to the table. Mm -hmm. So it's like, hey, you know, you might be trying to win initiative because you need to escape the Imperial fleet. I'm trying to win initiative because they need to finish researching this thing. Mm -hmm. And it's that, like, friction that generates a lot of the, a lot of the tension of the game. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it seems to be working. It, it's, it's, like, got a ways to go, but it's also... Uh, it, it came together a lot faster than other games. I've it's the most with. fun I've ever had playing it. <laughs> uh... How is Space Game? Is there any chance of a more streamlined bot for Oath? A more streamlined bot? Mm -hmm. I would love to see it. Someone please show me their more streamlined bot for Oath. Mm -hmm. I would just, I'd be delighted. I'd love to see do it, it tonight. <laughs> uh, have you thought of rebalancing lizards and roots and where's lost to W.A. Regal also become acolytes? Uh, we'll see how the advance. So, what I want to see before we make any root balance adjustments. So, so the direct answer is no. We have no balance uh, changes planned. But um, I really want to see how the advanced draft rules change the competitive scene, mm -hmm. and then from that we can start thinking about like, do, do there need to be adjustments? And what might end up happening is. Um, there are a few changes to the competitive balance of to the balance of root, which we might um, like s officially sanction. We probably won't like produce boards or anything. But basically, if you want to run a root tournament, we'd say like, "Hey, here are the four changes," mm -hmm. and we, we would just have like a little document on our website. Anybody is welcome to use it. Um, this is something that we, we've talked about b b before, but, but there's no particular schedule on it. It's just something out, out in the ether. Um, and I, I think there might even be a tournament that already uses a few balances like that. Sure. Things like uh, the Vagabond's infamy points not being per piece but per battle. It's like stuff like that. Mm. I was going to give the... There was a Dungeon Fortress. But That's fine. But no, it's Games fine. can share mechanisms. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I type that. I'm not sad about sharing. Can only have ones, for instance. That's, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. That's all good. All right. Stand so, and deliver right of please. Yes. Uh, so then there was a question over there for any Marauder news. Marauder news is that, oh, you know, we kind of owe an update now that we're just through the pre press. So we, we should write a Marauder update. Every day I see those updates from Kickstarter and I'm like, Oh, yeah, I've got four people want to hear about X. Yeah. Um, so I, we, we do have a small bit of Marauder update. Uh, as of last week, all the files are through pre-press. So production has begun in earnest. It's, it's actually, production has been going on for the wood for some time, but on everything, uh, production is gearing up. There's one step that we have to, um, that we have to complete before that, which is we have to get our pre-production copy. Uh, the earliest we probably get that is at the end of August. It's more likely that we get it in okay. September. There are just so many things, and it, it's it's hard. the The shipping slowdown right now is really affecting like every part of the industry in ways that I don't even think are widely appreciated. So like, it's even more difficult to airmail right now. 
Um, and so what, what a lot of our factories are doing <laughs> is instead of just sending, like usually when the factory would, they, they would put a different package in the airmail every day for a week and that's that's no problem but what they're doing to try to like keep overall traffic down is bundle the packages so we probably won't see root ppcs for marauder until we, they have everything together i love that there's a worldwide shipping crisis and somebody is like well when did you guys air mail your games and i'm like because if there's a crisis in one system there's a crisis like people are people have already thought to do that like it's, yeah. it's already yeah and plus it would be a little horrifying it'd be it's, way, just, it's so much more expensive it'd be, it'd be horrifying like, it doesn't yeah. scale like you just can't put that many games the thing about games is that they're mostly made of paper yeah and the thing about paper is that it's so heavy paper is so heavy <laughs> right um, and, and it's we we like the last route we did was seven shipping containers. So that's, you know, think of seven 40 foot van trailers driving around on, a, on an airplane. It just, yeah. it just wouldn't work. So, um, but uh, so in terms of the Marauder stuff though, we are like, we're at the finish line. We're, we're basically, we're, we're just waiting and then production will go on. I imagine, I think the Kickstarter date on it was like March uh -huh. or something like that. Um, I don't know exactly how we're going to hit it, but we're, we're generally on schedule, despite everything that's happened. Sure. We're generally kind of on schedule for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've protected our, our, our position a lot, so. Yeah. Uh, someone asked earlier if Cthulhu Wars was an inspiration for Root, because they could see um, Cthulhu Wars right here. Let me think about that question. Sort of? I, I like the design of Cthulhu Wars a lot. Um, I don't think there's anything in Root that made me, that I was like, oh, Cthulhu Wars has the answer. Mm -hmm. Part of it, and actually, some of Root was actually a reaction against it. So this is, again, strange because I do like that design a lot, but Root has a big map with lots of lots of paths because I didn't like how small the Cthulhu Wars map was. Mm -hmm. um, I also found Cthulhu Wars combat like a little too chaotic, and so the, the Root combat was like a riff on that. Mm -hmm. Um, I love the way powers unlock in Cthulhu Wars. Like you have, um, you have these different objectives that get shuffled. I think. Ah, do they get shuffled? Boy, I can't even remember now. But basically, every power has like a, a mission associated with it, mm -hmm. and then and then a, a cool thing that it gets, and just the variability of how those things line up is super fascinating. Sure. Um, yeah, there's just there are lots of things about the design that are really cool. That's great, great faction design. Um, if you see either of us yawning ever. It's because we both have young children. We both have children, so I'm two, two years old. Um, the other thing about Cthulhu Wars that root, uh, that made me think of Root is, uh, as much as I really like the design, I hate the production. I hate it. Hmm. It's so big and stupid. It's just, it's too big. It's too big. I, I, I think um, it could be in a box so much smaller and very, like, a very well-produced, very beautiful, simple production. Mm -hmm. um, I also am not crazy about the theme. Like yeah, I don't know. All yeah. the monsters look like piles of muscles, so like sure, it's not. It doesn't really highlight their asymmetric. To a robot, you look like a pile of muscles. <laughs> that's oh, that's true. We're all just <laughs> bags. Local of game designer calls root big and stupid. <laughs> <laughs> uh -uh. All right. Well, uh, any other questions? How are we doing for time? Oh, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Oh, we're Patrick good. has to leave somewhat soon. No, I, it's actually three thirty. Oh, then, yeah, then, we're, I'm, then you're good. I'm fine. Um, Any tips on teaching Oath? Um, so, if you have never taught it before, use the walkthrough. If you have taught it and you feel comfortable with, with the rules, uh, don't use the walkthrough. Teach it, your, teach it how you think the group would like to learn it best. And I would recommend cutting everyone's supply in half for the first turn, maybe even the first two turns. And don't mm -hmm. even teach the supply resetting rules. Because that will allow you to more easily get off, off the ground. What I usually do when I teach it to a new group is I cut everyone's supply in half, and then I will take everybody's first turn, and by the end of the first round, I've worked through all of the six of the actions. Mm -hmm. And then and then usually it's it, you know, it, it gets pretty easy. Don't, you know, like combat, when, when you're teaching combat, uh, it's very easy to skip things like targeting multiple sites, and um, and also like all the citizen rules, just skip that stuff and, and bring it in later or after the first game. So, lampshade for isn't that isn't lampshade for life, Nick? Shh. I, yes, it is Nick. Oh, sub Nick. Oh. 
Um, <laughs> are titles asymmetric? Uh, I mean, Ahoy is. Ahoy is. Ahoy yeah. is super as- not, not super asymmetric, but like it's different. It really feels different depending on who you're playing. And then um, space game is not but evolves. Evolves. It yeah. like it starts you in a position of symmetry it's and. The, the, the hope of the space game is you start the campaign in perfect symmetry mm-hmm. and you end being as asymmetric as fast. And I don't know if it's going to get that far, but that, that, that's the dream. Mm. Uh-huh. And I think Dungeon Fortress is very well player power right now. I've, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like classically asymmetric, or very well player power. Yeah. It's, yeah. Right. it's somewhere between, it's, if you compare like Root and TI, it's... Ti being variable player power and root being asymmetric, it's somewhere between those two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, literally unplayable. How do you get your friends to play Oath? Just be honest with them. <laughs> don't try to co- coerce. Oath is so weird. It's like a role playing game. Like, don't. I, whenever I see a thread of like how do I convince my friends to play Dungeons and Dragons with me, I just want to be like, get new friends. Yeah. Find player. Find people who like playing Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, don't drag your friends into a weird hobby. They don't want to drug into. How do I change my spouse? Well, uh, no. <laughs> I just I think Oath, Oath really benefits from the player, especially the first game, just having like a modicum of goodwill uh-huh. towards each other and what they're about to do. And I'm not uh, reconning happening. Yeah, I'm yeah. just saying like you know we're, we're gonna play a game that's like a little experimental, and it's a little goofy. And if you like Game of Thrones, or you know, or, or any you know anything yeah. like that. Maybe maybe this is going to resonate with you, and you just kind of go into it with like a lighter feel. Um, it's funny, like my, my brother's group that has really played Oath a lot. They like play Spelunky, and so he he told them what, what I sometimes tell people that like Oath is kind of a political roguelike, uh-huh. and they should be thinking of their games as like Spelunky runs, but mm-hmm. in a political game. And that like really hit with that group, sure. Um, which I think the right way of doing it. So I just learned that the deluxe components are we're considering a reprint. So that's that's good. I should probably pay more attention to ops meetings. <laughs> uh, can my friends be friends? Good question. Um, great, great question. <laughs> it gets getting very real here on the uh, first Tuesday month design screen. <laughs> Did you see that story from HardDrive.net that was like um, DM not prepared for? Uh, player's announcement that character is going to therapy. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, oh no! <laughs> Took a turn. No. Uh-huh. This even like I feel like this happens a lot in role playing games too, where like the DM and the players want different things. It's like a classic role playing sure. problem. They wrote a good campaign, and then the players start killing an innkeeper. And yeah, or yeah, we're gonna start a business. Well, then yeah, let's go play a game. Yeah, or a board game. Uh, any advice for designing fan based oath cards? It's hard. <laughs> it's a hard thing to design an Oath card because you because they have to interact with all the other Oath cards. Um, I would say lean on game systems when you can. Like Oath has a very strong. Sometimes we talk about like templating when it comes to game design, which is like if you have a power, can you design a template that will allow you to arrive at that power without introducing a bunch of like special mechanisms that only exist in the space of the card. So. If you can't explain your card in four lines, should it even be a card? Now there are some oath cards that do have a lot of text. And I think about like Inquisitor in the in the starting deck. I think that one probably has the most lines of text in the starting deck, um, and, and that's okay occasionally. But try to try to build oath cards that only take two lines of text to describe the, the power, and just see where that gets you. Uh, the other thing is uh, think about things that you wish you could do in oath that you haven't been able to do. So like for instance, um, one of my favorite cards that I built. Uh, was the Relic Thief card, and I really wanted there to be non-combat ways to steal relics. Like, I've been playing all these Relic games, and I was like, man, I, I almost want to build a whole new system of the game that allows players to do things without armies. And like, well, that's not going to work. The game's already at its complexity budget. But the design of the Relic Thief, like, allows that kind of stuff to happen. So yeah, think about things that you want to be able to do in games of both. And then I played a game with where we're looking for relics, and somebody got Skeleton Key, and I was like, Yes, this, this is fun. Open, um, <laughs> and it was the Chancellor who had Skeleton Key. I Skeleton Key is one of those cards I love, where players will get it, and then it becomes immediately clear how powerful that card is. So Skeleton Key, I think, is like burn a secret, spend a secret, take uh, a relic from the reliquary, um, and players will sometimes because it does have a startup cost. Players will just fight over the Skeleton Key. Like the entire right. game is like the fight over the Skeleton Key. Right. Um, it doesn't actually, you know, it might not even be used. 
Oh, Lord. All right. Uh, Brooke, any more questions off of Facebook? You're watching. Uh, I'm surprised good. nobody's asked us about Gen Con. We're not going. Oh, yeah, we're not going. We're not going. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I mean, I'm concerned about Pax U at this point, like, mm -hmm. so, yeah, let's see how it goes. This is the best animal to put in a game. What is the best animal to put in a game? A human. No. Give me a better answer than that. It got ignored, what? Oh. Oh, we missed your question? We're, we're, we're looking at the smallest, like, because we had to blow up the letter writing a lot. Uh, oh, are the final versions of the Marvel uh, yeah, you know, he's even thinking current, about that. Yeah, from the current PMP versions. Um... No. I don't think so. Well, I, actually, let me think about this. The version that the playtesting Discord has is absolutely the same version. But the final PMP is a little different. Uh, we should fix that. We'll probably... we'll pro Usually what we do is wait for the retail release of the game, and then at that point we update the TTS kit to be the same. We kind of broke that rule from the... Uh, from, with Oath because of COVID and everything. Mm. Um, yeah, I think only a little. I'd have to look at, like, uh, my, my head's a little scrambled because I'm thinking about the, ver the last version we released to playtesters, but I can't remember when the last public PMP was. And if it is behind, usually we'll, we'll, we'll probably update it. Mm. Update it before things get too busy with, with new projects. Uh, Best okay. animal. Put literally literally just got the same question on Facebook. Oh, about how it. different is the yeah yeah probably very close. <laughs> the hirelings like very very close yeah um, advanced setup is like the same yeah cool um, thank you Garrick just keeping us honest so I think I'll start a, a work in progress soon yeah. so I have so I have design notes to fall back on for a progress yeah we're we're getting to the point where like we have these three projects and we've been like dancing around the problem of the schedule. Mm -hmm. like the order in which we're going to do them because mm -hmm. obviously like we, we might be able to design three games at the same time but you can't like print market kickstart no I, I heard I heard Brooke say she wanted to yeah, so three, you know, two games in March people love it when lots of kickstart projects start on the same day so we thought we would do all of our kickstart yeah. projects next year on the exact same day get a buzz going yeah, yeah. Get, a, get a buzz <laughs> get a real groundswell mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. a buzz as they say yeah <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, so I think we'll probably, <laughs> I wouldn't mind like, you know, maybe in a month, maybe at our next meeting we announce the schedule or the meeting after that. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and, start, yeah. and start actually getting things in order. But I'll do, I'll do a WAP like I did with Vaz because it helps me, explaining why I make decisions helps me make better decisions, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. It's like yeah. teaching. Yes. No, teaching, like, yeah, you can always tell when, when I would, used to go to grad conferences, you'd always tell like, oh, this person has been like, Workshopping this in classes and sure. thinking through an idea. Yeah. This person has never said it out loud before. Whereas you have your own process. I have like a You're little. Fine. I have like a little brain trust that folks like to talk to about design. Mostly, I like to work alone for a long yeah. time. Yeah. Um, and then the TTS set for Dungeon Fortress got finished this morning, so I'll probably I, I gotta like do a bunch of work on it. But. I am keeping the space game off TTS as long as possible, uh, just as a design experiment. It's been interesting because well, it just yeah TTS is a very bad fit for it anyway, just because of the card play the space yeah yeah I just want it to be on TTS so I can play it on Friday nights with us, Bishan and, and friends yeah yeah uh, someone asked about how do you think the public response to Oath has been now it's been the wild it's been incredible it's been so positive mm -hmm. I think like I wasn't joking when I thought that I said like this game's going to be divisive and it is a little divisive but it's divisive in like a seventy thirty divisive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it has been great. I, it is. I think people. Um, w the way I think about it is, people are meeting it ex on its own terms, and you cannot ask for anything better for something that, that you work on, right? Um, so I don't know, I'm tremendously happy with it. Um, yeah, I'll get to your question. One second. So what drives me crazy is, do you remember me like being super mad at TTS mm -hmm. last year, and then Alita just sits down in three days and builds that TTS set like it was oh, whatever was, she's a this, digital native well this is what I do yeah and I was I was just like oh. and it's we gotta fix some things but sure. but it, but for for two days I was really impressed with the effort so mm -hmm. yeah 
So. That's good. And uh, much credit to Nick's excellent mentorship. I know you spent some time working. Yeah, working. Yeah, on top of the card creation. So, more serious question: Has the growth of tabletop tabletop TTS over the pandemic affected how you design? I would say that pre-pandemic, it had already impacted me because I try and make my games with less interrupts because I'm always thinking about if someone ha someday has to make this an asynchronous experience mm -hmm. then I want them to be able to do that. Plus interrupts are fantastically slow and annoying. So, I think I think uh, the reason why Oath has long to longer turns, more old school Euro turns is because of TTS. It's a very easy game. Oath is a very easy game to play on TTS because there are like there are some interrupts in the, in the turn structure, but like the, the longer turns are uh, much easier like to play. You don't need to be constantly pinging someone in the game to make a move. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think um, TDS has really changed how I do development and how I think about like the conversation about the game and managing versions and pushing mm -hmm. out things. Mm -hmm. uh, it allows for a much deeper and more robust development process. Because it, it, it what it does is it takes the burden of testing off the playtester's back and puts it on your back. And that's the simplest way I have to explain it. Because normally if I release a new kit, so it used to be that I would release new kits for games on like Mondays or Tuesdays. Because my playtesters would spend the week going to Kinko's or getting it their, their, their kits updated and ready and then they would play once on like a Saturday or something. Mm -hmm. And that's exhausting. A new version is like going to cause my playtesters to groan because they don't want to go back and reprint everything. But now with TTS, we kick out new versions at the end of the week because uh, it, it's immediately ready to play. And then, you know, we like have the new version go out on a Thursday or a Friday and then everybody is like queuing to get, to get games together. Mm -hmm. I've noticed this with, with John Company that like if I, if I push a version Friday night or Saturday morning, like there are games on Saturday and Sunday sure. like right away. And that kind of fast turnaround just doesn't happen. So it makes board games in development and testing behave kind of like video games, which I think is generally a really, really, really good thing. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll, we will keep doing it, uh, you know, even, even when we eventually get to that post-pandemic place. And you can make dice that play Smash Mouth when you roll them. Yeah, that's um, the most important feature. That's, which is um, unlike reality. So. How do we know when something's done? Uh, I mean, I'm so much more intuitive than you. In yeah, that sense. it's when you like stop changing things. It's when you, it's when you haven't changed it in two weeks. Yeah, it's when you um yeah that's that's also true. Art is never done. It's a pain. I could still be working on Vast if I had just said <laughs> it's time to publish Vast because people are waiting for it. And that's the advantage of Kickstarter is you have this audience that's like, hey, we want the thing we bought a while ago. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think like. For me, it is when you keep playing it, and so well, we talked about this when it, mm -hmm. when we're evaluating Havoc. So when you start a new project, it's very fun, exciting, great, everything's mm -hmm. awesome, and then there's this trough you get into of like self-loathing and yes. hatred towards the design, always. and always, mm -hmm. and, and, and being a professional is just learning how to manage your feelings during that trough, and. Um, and then eventually you rise up out of it, and the first time I played Vast, I wanted to play, play it again after playing it, even though I'd had that experience before mm -hmm. I went into the trough. But post-trough, I felt that was the moment where I was like, this is this is the design that we're gonna lock it, and now we're gonna, now we're gonna develop this design. Um, and so I played a game, we had, a, we had an ex, we had many moments of Fiero, and then it was like, we wanna play again, so. I, when I'm playing a game, I usually take like notes in two columns, mm -hmm. and one column will be like things that need done, like oh this word is wrong, this column needs shifted, whatever. And then the other thing are like the other column is stuff I'm worried about, like oh is this is it broken to just build nothing but this building or mm -hmm. that. And as you play, you those lists will will get longer and shorter and, and everything else, but eventually they do just kind of like you you don't have anything to say. Right. And I really, and so like, you know, you're always trying to, so Oath is an interesting example of that because we got to the point in the summer before we finished where like I didn't have a lot of things for that first list. And the second list was like, ah, combat just isn't quite like resonating right. I didn't really even know what that meant. But that was like the only thing that stuck on that list. Like, oh, it just doesn't feel right. But it kept writing on his office wall. Combat doesn't resonate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, combat it was, yeah, it it was getting combat doesn't hit. Yeah. Um, and then, so then that's when we went back and revisited combat and kind of redesigned that. 
so it is it is intuitive too but it um at least i i love deadlines and i think maybe like i will and maybe this is like a cognitive bias issue i imagine it is if i have a deadline which i know a project is going to be finished i'm going to make sure that my list is clean by the time that it's done sure. even if it probably shouldn't be clean right you know what i mean yeah um and, and i mean what other viewers going to talk about <laughs> right, yeah, so I got, yeah. I got, I got to watch out for them too. Yeah. Um, and so I always, I, I want like, the the game is done when it has to be done, but usually you just have less things that you want to change, and you just get to a point. At least I, I find myself getting to points where I'm like, no, I, it it is taking the form that it's taken, and I don't want to, I don't want to mess with it anymore. But I think that's a good, I think that's a good, um, a good thought about the process for us is that. I think you and I are both very good at getting to a state of doneness and going to the other. Yeah. Is it really? Is it really? Are yeah. you really happy at this moment? Right. Yeah. And and then and, or are you just or are you just in love with it because it'll be done. But but there are some there are some folks I know who are like who and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Who mm-hmm. like I mean like I mean if you Patrick like if, if fast if fast hadn't like kickstarted hadn't funded right would you still be tinkering on it? <laughs> I mean, you know, so, no, no, yeah, no. yeah, but I, I yeah. do meet people who are like, no, like I want to keep working on this project forever, and I have never, I have never felt you that. Get way. I, I want, yeah, 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 yeah. You get something like Marinat, not, not yeah. Nostrum, that, That's right. But I, but I, I, I like. I generally find that I want to tinker around until it's done. But every project ends and it's done. You got to learn more from the next project. Yeah, I have like never had in my, it, which is funny saying that having now done a couple, like extensive second editions, mm-hmm. but it's been. Two, three years since I finished Premiere, and I don't want to go back and I, I haven't, I've never thought like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm going to go back and edit a card. It's like, no, it's done. So, uh, Lampshade for Life is calling out for a deadline. I think is what I think we're supposed to take away from that. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> someone asked if there is the. And I, maybe we can wrap it up here. Yeah, it's, sure. No, uh, this is it's about three, right? Now that we're fit like a, a good looking at the critical critical success of both. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about expanding it? About expanding Oath? Because um, I think that was, I think for me, that was one of the questions for an expansion was, is it is it selling properly? I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it seems very crass and commercial, but... I no, but time, it, yeah. it, like, so I think the less commercial way of putting that is, is there an audience that we want to support with more content, mm-hmm. right? Which is like, basically, like, is it selling enough that, we should, that it makes sense to keep selling it? But also... This is my biggest hesitancy about thinking about root ending. Mm-hmm. Is I don't want it to end if people are still Enjoying. finding a yep. lot to love in it, right? right. So I, like, I want it to just kind of like keep growing. And it, 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 this is you know I I have heard the story from, from retailers who said you know when they stopped doing Kark expansions for that several year period, mm-hmm. the sales of Kark Core fell, right. Right. and it kind of seemed like the project was like dead. Um, but I and so like I, I you know I, I want Root to continue to be supported in the same way that like there's a new Apex character coming out in like a couple weeks and there are, you know there, there'll be a new Dota character in a bit and I like I love that about those games. With Oath though, Oath is kind of special because the, the pitch was the game has no expansions. All the expansions are in the box. They're in the box. They're yeah. all in the box. Yeah. Um, but if there if there's real hunger for it, like there are things that we can add. So I think. Dungeon. There are two ways of expanding Oath. One is a content expansion, and one is a mechanical expansion. So the mechanical expansion is when I've talked in the past about adding victory conditions, invader roles, religious systems, stuff like that. That's one way to build Oath, and I find it kind of compelling and kind of terrifying because Oath is already so much. Mm -hmm. The other way to expand Oath is to say, here is a new core deck that you can use as a starting deck. It's 54 brand new cards. And here there are 10 more sites and 20 more relics. And it's a ton of content. Um, and, and we like build that as a small expansion. When that is, might even fit in the, in the box. When has making another deck ever worked for us? <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing. I hear more edifices a lot. I, I would yeah. love to put more edifices. That to me is a very natural and good yeah. place for an expansion. So somebody just asked... Um, Marshall, don't tell me the new Apex character comes today because I have things I need to do tonight and I cannot be playing Apex. Can you scroll up a little bit? I've already forgotten it because I'm 46 and I'm ex- talking exhausted. Freaking exhausted. Do you have any dream designs? Something you would make. I think we are working on our dream designs. Yeah, 100%. I feel like, I feel like, 
So I, I commented publicly a couple weeks ago that I have four, I have four things left in me that I want to publish mm-hmm. at this moment. And that's like all I want. That's not done. I'm, I don't know, really going to be done, but those are like the four. Like those are the four things I'm working on now. So, mm-hmm. I mean, not actively I'm working in touch with right, right, right. But just one of the four. So yeah, just one of the four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cross your so. No, I, yeah, I don't have any. The dream design is the one I'm working on. I, I feel so. The fact that we get to pick our projects and pick them and determine like the scope of the project right at the start is incredible mm-hmm. and uh, it, uh, there's nothing more that I, that I could possibly ask than to be able to work on a game like that yeah. right so okay um, cool well that that's it um, oh my gosh we'll hire me as a court gesture maybe um, alright well thank you all thanks for joining us uh, next so before I instruct our, our wonderful intern to press on the exit button or the stop stream button, mm-hmm. um, I'll just say we have so a couple reminders. We are modeling the new t-shirts. You can pre-order them now. Uh, they're wonderful. And then we also have uh, the Fort Cats and Dogs expansion arriving at any day. And there'll be more Fort as well also coming to the store. Um, we have root restocks on the way as well, or mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, you know, everything's in process. Um, Oath restock. Oath, Oath restock too, and Oath pre-orders I think are still shipping right now. So like if you if you want a copy of Oath, you can get it. Uh, and we will have a, another design chat for you on, in early August. No, nope, early September. Now is early That's August. how calendars work, early yes. September. <laughs> and uh, pretty soon, either at that one or the October one, we will be announcing our lineup and give you guys some concrete dates for when these new games are actually going to start coming out. What if what if we had to wait a year to do the next chat? Just because only August. August. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because of that, the <laughs> word is the word is <laughs> gone. <laughs> All right, well take care everybody and have a wonderful Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, press the other one.